So we've been talking for a while now about how a big warm up was going to come to the east and then some cold air was going to come back in and try to cause another battle zone and lead to a bunch of storms. Well, we are officially close enough to this happening that we can say that we were right. OK, and it does look like there's going to be some pretty significant weather coming out of this. Check it out. We've got a day four slight risk of severe weather in portions of Texas, Oklahoma and Kansas and a rare day five slight risk in Texas and Oklahoma. Once again, the dynamics behind this system look like they're going to be pretty intense. So let's dive into this and tell you what you can expect. What's causing this? Okay, look at this big dip in the jet stream as we get into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, this weekend. This big divot right here is what we call a trough. And inside of it, we've got cold air, a much cooler air coming down from the north. Out in front of it, we've got all that warm air we've been talking about. And they're going to bada bing, bada boom, smash together right here in the middle. And this trough ejection is deep. It's powerful. And it does kind of do a little bit of a baseball swing from a positive to a negative tilt here around Texas and Oklahoma. This is where we really think there's going to be a lot of momentum that's going to lead to the formation of a pretty big storm as it ejects off to the north and east. And let's push this forward. And you can see all this week, we're going to be dealing with the moisture and the snow and the rain up here in the northwest. That energy is going to dive over the Rockies and then meet up with some of that Gulf of Mexico energy and smash right together here uh, and, and create a pretty intense storm system. Watch what happens uh, around Thursday into Friday. You can see our low pressure center start to form here. We got a 999 millibar system, 5 a.m. on Saturday. You can see the rain and thunderstorms extending from southern Texas all the way up into Kansas and then just general rain up here. And what happens is because of that negative tilt and that trough ejection, this thing gets caught up, turns into a bomb of a storm, gets all the way down to 969 millibars possibly on Sunday, uh, and then races off to the north and east. And this quick transfer of energy is going to bring a lot of rain, uh, potentially a lot of snow on the backside, and certainly a lot of severe weather to a lot lot of people as we go forward. Just look at that though. This would be a blizzard and a half up here, possibly in Northern Minnesota, up into Ontario and Manitoba. But before it's a blizzard, it is going to be a severe weather maker. Let's talk about that. As early as Thursday evening, we are going to see storms pop up over here in Western Kansas in the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. These could possibly be severe, uh, but watch how everything kind of blows up in coverage and intensity as we go into Friday and especially into Saturday. Look at this, guys. We are going to see widespread, potentially severe thunderstorms all the way from southern Texas up through Kansas, uh, and then it's going to try to spread east, possibly into Missouri, portions of Arkansas and Louisiana, and um, we'll see what happens from there. Right now, a lot of the storms are supposedly going to die out by Sunday and not really affect anybody to the east, but there's still a chance that some of that leftover energy could cause some problems over here. The main problems are definitely going to be happening down to the south, though. Look at that dry line. You see that really sharp area where the warm moist air is meeting the cold, dry air here right in the middle, uh, somewhere near Dallas, down to west of Waco and Austin. Uh, we are going to see a, a really intense line of storms here, probably uh, Saturday night into Sunday. But remember, the storms start all the way back here on Thursday night, possibly supercells and thunderstorms during this period. We're going to see them Friday, but you can see where the most intense dynamics really start to kick in, and that's going to be on Saturday. So I am uh, concerned about that. And then, of course, we're concerned about this big punch. Look at this big punch of cold cold air that's coming up into the Midwest as well. If there was more warm air here, if this was a, a really juicy system, if we had all kinds of ample moisture uh, up in this part of the country, we would be talking about a devastating and, and potentially historic severe weather outbreak. This is a huge trough ejection. There's all kinds of, um, you know, like kind of perfect parameters for tornadoes once this storm makes it up into the Great Lakes regions. But Thankfully, the moisture isn't there, it looks like. So uh, that could be our saving grace here. The moisture is there, though, in the southern portion of the U.S., and this is why we do think we're going to have some big-time storms down there. Let's take a look at some Nader juice, okay? This is the lower-level jet. This is showing what winds could be like just above the surface, and you can see we are pretty elevated here. We've got a little bit of Nader juice in Kansas down through Texas on Thursday night. Things kind of calm down a little bit on Friday, but as we get into the overnight periods, that's when things start to really ramp up. Early Saturday morning, look at that white and brown there. That's where we're talking about 60 to 70 knots of lower level jet. Very moist, very sweet, very juicy nader juice down here. If we happen to see any supercellular activity during this time period, uh, you know, tornadoes are almost a guarantee. But once again, the farther east and the farther north this storm goes, the less moisture we have to work with. Uh, and we don't have to worry about the tornadoes. But watch this, guys. This is huge. This is massive. If, if this actually was to happen, let's say this happened in the summer or in the spring and we had, you know, like 70, 80, 
180 degree temperatures in this zone right here. And we had widespread dew points up in the 70s. I'm serious. This would be a tornado outbreak and a half point five and three quarters rounded to the nearest 10th. But thank goodness it's not right. OK, but it's still going to be windy, still going to be rainy, still going to usher in quite a bit of cold air uh, for a lot of us here in the upper Midwest after the thing goes by. Total precipitation through November 6th looks like this. OK, pretty much everywhere that is expected to see some of the stronger storms could see more than two or three inches of rain. Uh, and then we are going to see quite a bit of rain up here through Iowa, Minnesota and Wisconsin as well, as we're just going to get some leftover moisture and not really any strong storms. Uh, but still, it's going to train over the same areas and lead to you know maybe two or three inches of rain. The main threat areas are going to be down here and up here, where uh, in the north, we're talking about maybe a blizzard. And in the south, we're talking about a severe weather outbreak with a real potential for tornadoes, just depending on how the ingredients and timing line up. We'll know more in the near future, obviously. And I'm going to have a full main channel video about this tomorrow. Hey, not only are we talking about big storms on land, we're talking about sea storms as well. We got Tropical Storm Lisa down here in the Caribbean. Tropical storm conditions are possible for people around Jamaica today and then interests along the coast of Central America, especially near Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico should monitor the progress of this system because it does look like it's going to head right towards that region. And there it is on the Euro model. Watch what happens as I push this into the future. It goes to the west and it ultimately weakens according to the Euro. Okay, so a tropical storm making landfall over here near the Yucatan Peninsula. That's more than likely what's going to happen or a low end hurricane. Let's take a look at this thing on the GFS as well. Let's put her into motion. Same thing goes into the Yucatan Peninsula and there's just not a lot else to say about it. But if we go into La La Land, if we keep pushing the GFS to its limits, you can see that there's so much more activity down here in the Caribbean. And this is what I was talking about in my last video, man. This is going to stay unsettled for a while and there's going to be so many troughs and magnets trying to pull up these storms towards the U.S. I would be surprised if we didn't have some sort of interaction, even if it was like this, a little leftover tropical energy, maybe a weak tropical storm that comes in uh, towards Florida or maybe on the East Coast. Uh, I'm looking for, though, the possibility for something like this to interact with one of these big sweeping systems from Canada and then cause a big snowstorm. I, I, I don't know for sure if that's going to happen, but that would certainly be interesting. OK, that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and the main channel. I'm going to have a video over there tomorrow. And just thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, don't be scared. Be prepared. There's a big storm coming, but we're going to get through it together. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Whoop, 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 whoop.